Good afternoon, good evening. God is still good. He's still on his throne. In spite of what we think and do, God still has love for us. In spite of our, our problems, in spite of our disappointments, and in spite of the pain that we feel uh, at the loss of those whom we love, it is such a... Uh, a sad thing to lose our sister today who yesterday on Friday um, uh, we we truly enjoyed her traveling with us to Africa she was the most energetic uh, she never complained she just did she just went with the program and to know that she is no longer here with us it simply means that God has decided that he, she should be uh, taken to the other side. And so when we talk about our sister, Roz, it, it should be with joy and should be with uh, a smile on our faces because she did a good work. And this is not the eulogy. It's just a, a personal uh, reflection on the relationship that I had with her and everybody here had a relationship with her and to uh, and to reflect on those it is extremely uh, rewarding and interesting and uplifting overall I'm very sad but at the same time, I have to recognize that God knows best. I have been doing some, uh, just a survey, you might say, a little bit. Not too much, but a survey. And I went to several people and I asked them, other than material things, what is it that you would like to have most in the new year? Now, I, I said uh, very clearly, Roger, not material things, because I knew that some of you would say, I want a Bentley, <laughs> or a new house, or the mortgage I have to be paid off. And so I deliberately uh, asked you, some of you to tell me, what is it that you need the most in the new year? And this came back more than others. I, I received several, but this one stood out. And interestingly, many people said that I would like to have more patience. I'd like to have more patience in the new year. And, and in the King James version of the book of James, where it says James chapter 1 and verse 4, the Bible says, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And then I went to another translation of the Bible, the New International Version. In James chapter 1 and verse 4, changes the word somewhat. It says, perseverance must finish its work so that ye may be mature and complete not lacking anything and so I like I like I like both of those words because in order to be patient perseverance has to be a part of the agenda and, and perseverance or patience really is one of the greatest virtues in a Christian's character. Learning to work and to watch and to wait is part of God's plan for you. Every Christian must learn the art of self-control in difficult situations. If you're going to rise to the highest level of faith, and, and God speaks to us and through us and we're cool, calm, and collected. Expressions, expressions of anger, 
impatience, and frustration demonstrate that we have not yet learned how to let go and let God. Emotions, and we are all uh, emotional beings, but emotions are a natural product of the mind. Uh, the seasoned Christian brings his mind under subjection to the spirit and learns to operate from a higher plane. And, and, and one of the things that we can do is to learn how to be more patient. Now, one of the things that I learned and where I learned this from is watching action movies on television. I learned to talk to myself when those people are acting crazy and when they're shooting each other and when they're cursing each other and when they're doing all manner of evil and, and, and you, see, you see the scene develops and all of a sudden you, you start getting tense and you start talking back to the television and you start doing all of these things. And I kept, I, I learned patience by saying it's a movie. That's all it is. It's a movie. And so I watched the scientific part of it. How did the director do this? And how did they do this? And why did they put this together? And what was the major impact on me when this particular scene took place? And, and, and then I started analyzing, saying that this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to get me to react. They're trying to get me to get upset. Somebody said, somebody said that they watched this movie, uh, oh my Lord, I've forgotten the name of it, but Denzel Washington played a pilot. Flight. And, and, and one brother said, as much as I love Denzel Washington, he made me mad in this movie. I didn't like him in this movie. And, and, and when I heard that statement, I said, whoever put it together accomplished their objective. They wanted you to dislike him. I tell you, I haven't seen the movie, and, and the way they make movies these days, I don't know if I want to see uh, the movies, but I saw him in this movie called Training Day. And guess what? I didn't like him in that movie. Now, I like him, but if I, had, if I didn't know him, and if I had not known of his history and his background, if I saw the brother, I'd say, I don't like you. Why? Because it is contrived, it is put together by a group of people to change your emotional state. Are y'all with me on this? And, and, and so one of the things that that we learn about patience is that patience sometimes comes in persecution. Our patience, our patience is challenged in, in many areas, and, and, and the most difficult is the times of persecution. No one likes to be persecuted. Nobody likes to be put down. Nobody likes to be talked about. Nobody likes all of that negativity. And the flesh, and the flesh naturally meets persecution with resistance. And when somebody attacks like a boxer, our fighting hands immediately go up uh, to cover our face, and then we prepare to fight back. Talk to me, I talk to you. You hit at me, I hit at you. Put me down, I put you down. But, but the Bible tells us that those who are in the spirit should have a different response. Romans chapter 4. Five and, and verse 3 says, We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation does what? It works patience. In other words, uh, in other words if you're a child of God, you, not only are you going to get attacked, but you're going to get attacked more than somebody who is not really a child of God. And, and, and the more you're attacked and the more you're going to be attacked, the more patient you should become. Jesus demonstrated the ultimate uh, patience in persecution. And let me talk about Jesus for a minute. In Luke chapter 23 and, 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 and verse uh, 34, uh, Jesus was falsely accused. Anybody ever been lied on? 
He was rebuffed. Have you ever been turned down? Have you ever been talked about? And, 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 and he was ultimately crucified. And yet his prayer, yet his prayer was, Father, forgive them. Now, I know what some of you are thinking right now. That's Jesus. That ain't me. Now, and now, now that's him. I don't have that much. I don't have that much patience. And, and listen, Jesus is saying, that's where you ought to be. That's where, that's what your goal is. That's where you ought to be as a Christian. That, that, that when people talk about you, when they put you down, that should be a strengthening part of your spiritual life. He, we too can learn to forgive those who persecute us. I, I, I don't mind telling you, I've been hard. I, uh, I grew up in the segregated South. And I still remember some of those injustices that were done to my father and my mother. I remember those things. And, and, even, and even to this day, I can see their faces. I can see the venom in their eyes and, and, and the invectives that come out of, their, uh, out of their mouth. I can see it today. But I, I, I tell you, the older I get, the less I remember. And less I hold against it because my blood pressure is high enough. So there is patience in persecution. And, and so don't, 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 don't put down, as a Christian, don't, don't put down persecution because they're going to come after you. I'm talking about the evil ones. I'm talking about the forces of evil, the, uh, the spirit of the devil. And some are in people. people. Some people are just full of the devil. And... And, and, and they're going to come after you. And the key is, the key is, I want you to get this. If you don't get anything else out of this, the key is how you react. It's not who's going to act. It's going to be how you react. Talk about me. I'm going to talk about you. The Bible is saying, forgive them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then there is patience and perplexity. Uh, uh, I'm not going to keep you all long tonight. I know that you're exhausted over the football games and some of your, some of your favorites won and some of your favorites lost. Uh, and you feel kind of sad and you feel a little down and all that. But, but there are times in our lives when, uh, when we don't know what to do and uh, we don't know which way to turn. And, and these are the times when the Lord says we should put our trust in him. The psalmist proclaimed that he was, in, in, in Psalms 40 and verse number 1, he proclaimed, he said, waited patiently for the Lord, that he inclined me and he heard my cry. This now generation, this generation that we live in now, it, it, it seeks instant response to everything. Uh, maybe it's time for me to uh, really retire because I can't understand the me generation. Uh, food tastes better when it's cooked good. I'm missing my perked coffee rather than my instant coffee. My, my body has adjusted to the microwave, and, and, and now I want to go back to where you could just simply uh, enjoy. I, you know, I, I'm not acclimated to looking at the clock when we're in worship service. When I grew up, we didn't have a clock. We started church when we got there, and, and, and we left when we ran out of steam. Amen. And, 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 and so there, those things he said, waiting patiently, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. But the psalmist wants us to know that the greatest rewards come when we pray, and then we wait for the Lord's response. So James wrote these words. In James chapter 1 and, and, and verse 3, he says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And this scripture tells us, that in order for our patience to be developed, it must first be tested. We, we may not enjoy the test from the flesh perspective, but from the spiritual perspective, we should see it as, as an opportunity to grow more like Christ. One of the things that bothers me just a little bit, you know, 
uh, they make these expensive cars and they turn them over to a, a, a group of people and they crash test them. I would say, don't crash it. Give it to me. I'll drive it. I'm not worried about whether it's going to fall apart in an accident or something like that. But what they do is they test the car to see if the car is, is worthy to be driven, worthy to be sold. And don't think that you're going to go through life without being tested. You, you, we who go to school, guess what? We get tested. When you drive down the street, and I know that you do the same thing I do when you look in your rearview mirror and there's a policeman behind you, you start looking and you start acting a little bit better, even though you weren't breaking the law in the first place. Amen. We all are going to be tested one way or another. And so in order for our patients to develop, we must not enjoy the test. And we will not enjoy the test from the flesh perspective. But from a spiritual perspective, we should see it as an opportunity to grow more like Christ. Job. Job was patient in perplexity. He didn't know why. He didn't know what. He didn't know when or where he was going to end up. But he trusted God with deep determination. Even when his wife. Man, the worst thing in the world for a man to have to turn against him is his wife. When, when you are there all by yourself and she turns against you, I don't know what that would do to you, but that would mess me up. And, 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 and his wife, and then I have my best friends. Roger, are you a friend of mine? He, no, he said no. He's not a friend. Lord, okay, I'm going to go to Dion. Dion, are you a friend of mine? I, 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 that would really be something if you turned against me, and, 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 and we both know I'm right. That would, be, that would be one of the most devastating things that could ever happen. And, and Job had that to happen to him. His wife turned against him. And you know what his friends did? They laughed. And his response was in Job 13 and verse 15, you know what he said? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yeah, I will trust him. And then there's patience in, in progress. Even when we see some visible evidence that God is moving in our lives, that's the time when we often need the greatest patience. Christians, uh, and, and, and Brother Moore said that this morning, that we have a tendency to run ahead of God, uh, to, to get ahead of him when the prize is in, is in sight. That's because modern society has raised us to believe that we should not have to wait for anything. But Hebrews 12 and verse 1 says, and warns us to run with patience the race that is set before us. If we would be truthful, we would have to admit that, that most of us are spoiled or were spoiled by our parents when we were children. Now, I'm not talking about my generation. I'm talking about our kids' generation. My boys are spoiled. My grandchildren are spoiled. Don't tell me. Spoiled. She spoiled him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I was hoping you'd say yes. Roger said no, but you said yes. <laughs> you know. Spoiled. This is a spoiled generation. My, 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 my granddaughter said, I, I, you know, if I run out of money, I ask my grandma. She still got plenty of money. <laughs> Never think about where it comes from. Son, we don't, have any, we don't have any money in the bank. We do because there's still a checkbook. They don't think about where uh, everything comes from and how it comes by hard work. And, and, and they're created, we've created a monster with impatient demands. We not only want everything and feel entitled to everything, we want it now. And when you feel as though you're not making progress, 
And that's often the time when the Lord reveals that you're making greater progress than you thought. First John chapter 5 and verse 3, verse 4 and verse, and verse 5, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep the commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith, who is he that overcometh the world? He that believeth, he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this with this last point about patience and postponement. As Christians, we often feel that we're not making the progress that we should, we're not as adequate as we think. I heard the responses this morning. I want to be a better Christian. I want to be able to grow in the Lord. Have you ever felt that you've been spending your life getting ready for something important, but you never quite arrived at doing it? It doesn't matter whether you're a college graduate or whether you're an apprentice or an intra-level employee or even a junior executive. We have all experienced impatience and frustration at the lower level of responsibility, wondering whether our lie is stuck in a permanent holding pattern. Everywhere we turn, life seems to say, not yet. If that's the way you feel, look around. You're in good company. Joseph had God-given abilities in leadership. He had God-given abilities in, in, in management as well as wisdom to interpret dreams. But he spent a number of years as a household servant and an unjustly sentenced inmate in a prison before given the responsibility as Pharaoh's second in command. Genesis chapter 39. Moses, Moses spent uh, two-thirds of his life being shaped by the last third. During the first third, he was going up in Egypt. Where the scripture says that he was learning all wisdom of the Egyptians and becoming mighty in words and in deeds. Acts chapter 7. Daniel. Daniel submitted to a course of study that includes the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. And as a Hebrew, he formerly probably found much of this curriculum to be opposed to his upbringing. But he experienced it without succumbing to the pagan Babylonian culture. He eventually rose higher and higher in the government until he was advising the kings of empires. Daniel chapter 1. No matter where you are in life, God has a purpose for you. No matter where you are in life, God has a direction for you. And right now, right now it may seem slow. Right now, it may seem boring, may seem to be boring, but as a follower of Christ, you have a reason to make today count. You have a reason to make a 2013 count. Today is the foundation upon which tomorrow is built. What tragedy it would be as when the opportunity knocks, you were found unprepared to accept it because you have squandered the time of preparation. I want to close. I want to close with a very personal observation. And I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way that you have to be careful when you are interviewed by a reporter. You have to be very careful. And so they did an interview for me and Mary and the other couple that, that when we went to Abilene. And this reporter just talked for hours. And he got me to relax. He just, just hung out with me. And he's just talking and just talking. And then he would ask a question, and I'm, I'm relaxed. I'd answer the question. He would, he would come back. And, and then one of the things that they asked was, what is it that you uh, regretted the most uh, from your experience at Abilene? And so I just, he had me relaxed. So I just said, I regret, I regret not having March. I didn't get a chance to march. I, I finished my class and bye y'all, I'm gone. And, 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 and so I didn't realize what he was doing. I got set up. 
He was very nice. He just asked me this. And, and so then I got a call and said, we would like for you to come down to the, the president's uh, at this building, and you're going to be with the president, you're going to be with the chancellor, you're going to be with the faculty. And I walked in. And there are all of these hundreds of, uh, uh, of faculty members and staff members, and especially the president and, and, and the chancellor. And, and, and they said, Billy, uh, we want you to come over here. And I walked over there, and they gave me a robe and put a robe on me and said, now put this on. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? And, and then the reporter was just hanging around. He wouldn't leave me. He was just hanging. He was just, everywhere I go, he would hang. He would go. And, 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 uh, and, and, and then I had to have, you know, I'm not good at this, so I didn't know which side the tassel was supposed to go on. And so I'm, I'm standing in the mirror. If y'all read that article, you'll see it. I'm standing in the mirror. You know how I'm, trying, I'm Hollywood people, trying to get it all together and, 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 and trying to make this thing look good. So uh, I'm standing there, and I looked over my shoulder, and there he was, just standing there. And, and, and so uh, once I felt that I got it right, I started laughing. And I just laughed and said, oh, this is my graduation. And do you, do you know that he wrote that in the article? That 50 years later, Curl comes back to the university and graduates. <laughs> Be careful. It, doesn't, it took 50 years. 50 years for me to put on the marching robe. 50 years. My roommate at the time said, they asked him the same thing, got him to lower his guard, and he said, I miss, I miss, uh, I didn't get a class ring. And then we walked into this room with all of these students, and all of a sudden they said, we are issuing you a class ring. Be careful. 50 years later, so you say, I've been at this church 20 years. I haven't grown anywhere. I've been here. My grandmother was here. My grandfather was here. And I still haven't seen any changes. Listen, you better start looking to the Lord. Rather than to what your status is. You may have to hang around for 60 years. Because it ain't about you. It's all about Jesus Christ. And, and that's what I like about the church of Christ. We, we, we are here to glorify God. And we're not here to elevate ourselves. We're not here uh, uh, to, to, to become Mr. Big Stuff and somebody. We are here to glorify God. And wherever God puts you, wherever God puts you in his church, that's where you ought to stay. Because at the end, you're going to get your ring. In the end, you're going to get what? Your robe. In the end, you're going to get what? Your mansion. In the end, you're going to get your crown. You're here tonight wondering how much patience do you need. Just stay where you are and let God move you. Stay where you are. But, but, but first thing you got to do, the first thing you got to do, it, it, listen, the first thing you got to do is to get into the church. You, you have to obey the gospel. You have, to be a, you, have to be, you have to be obedient to the call of God. Re, you know, know who he is. Repent of your sins. Confess him to be the son of God. We, we bury you in water for the remission of your sins. It doesn't matter whether the water is cold. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the blood of Christ washes away all of your sins. My time is up. My, I got three minutes left, so I'm going to stop on this. Somebody here ought to become a member of the Lord's church. You come right now while we're together stand and sing the song of invitation. We pray. We pray that you'll come to him right now. If you need him, if you need him, if you need him. Tonight, 
Tomorrow's sun may never rise To bless thy long deluded sight This is the time of envy wise Be saved, oh, tonight Oh, why not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? Will thou be saved? Then why?